Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Victoria and in this video we will talk about hypotrophy in pediatric patients. Hypotrophy is a chronic insufficiency condition in which a child takes in too little protein and calories or a condition that disrupts the assimilation of proteins in the child's body. In hypotrophy, the weight and height of the child are below the normal ranges. The height and weight are below two standard deviations or below the third percentile for the respective age and gender of the child. The pediatric patient has a BMI below 18 after the second year of life. There are two main reasons for hypotrophy. Either a malnutrition with decreased intake of proteins, which can have different factors, some of which include social deprivation or abandonment, this is called exogenous hypotrophy, or disorders in the digestion and assimilation of proteins, disorders leading to increased energy consumption as acute or chronic infections, malignancies, thyrotoxicosis, or disorders of tissue metabolism as cardiac or renal diseases, chronic pneumonia, or diabetes. Also disorders in the overall metabolism as lipidosis or galactosemia can occur. This is called endogenous hypotrophy. Hypotrophy can occur as an independent disorder or as a sign of a major disease causing hypotrophy. Generally, all systems of the body are affected. There is usually a mental dysfunction due to deficiency in the vitamins B1 and B12, as well as a deficiency in magnesium and phosphate, which lead together to irritability and depression. Also, the cardiovascular system and kidney function is impaired. The hypotrophy of the body leads to a decrease in heart volume, there is a decrease in myocardial tissue and loss of size of the cardiac chambers. This is usually seen by symptoms as bradycardia, hypotension, a exacerbation of heart failure and arrhythmia by electrolyte disbalance as well as a peripheral circulatory failure leading to cyanosis and shock. The loss in circulation leads to impairment of the kidney function and decrease in glomerular filtration. The total decrease in muscle mass of the body also leads to the respiratory muscles becoming weaker. This impairs the function of the lungs and leads to hypoxia and hypercapnia so the total increase in carbon dioxide in the body. Together with the impaired immunity and decreased function of the respiratory epithelium, it leads to increased occurrence of pneumonias. In case of prolonged starvation, the cells of the intestinal mucosa atrophy and the size and depth of the intestinal villi decreases. The stomach, pancreatic and bile secretion is usually decreased and the bacterial flora of the gastrointestinal system comes into imbalance. This leads to malabsorption and leakage of bacteria and toxins into the bloodstream, which can promote the development of systematic infections. Malnutrition and weight loss also impair the thermoregulation, as there is decreased thermogenesis in the absence of fat tissue and peripheral vasoconstriction occurs, this can lead to hypothermia and promote infections. The cell immunity is usually suppressed and the defense capabilities against infections is decreased. The total count of lymphocytes is decreased and the thymus, which plays an important role as an immune organ in children, atrophies earlier than normal. So overall, the child becomes more prone to getting infections and all the organ systems are impaired in their function. Hypotrophy comes in different clinical pictures and can be divided into three stages. Markers for the stage of hypotrophy are the height and weight of the child, together with the amount of subcutaneous fat tissue that is present. 
The amount of subcutaneous fat tissue can be measured by measuring the thickness of skin folds at different areas of the body. Measured can be the abdominal skin fold, as well as the mid-axillary fold, the pectoral, suprailiac and subscapular. Used is a device called skin fold caliper. In stage 1 the subcutaneous fat is reduced in the area of the chest and abdomen, the height is normal, but the weight is 20% less than the mean weight for the child of the specific age and gender. In stage 2 the subcutaneous fat tissue continues to decrease in all areas of the body, including the limbs, and the height and weight are below the normal range for the age and gender of the child. In stage 3, the most severe stage, the subcutaneous fat tissue becomes so little that it basically disappears. The growth comes to a stop and the weight is around 40 to 60 percent below the mean weight of the child in the respective age and gender. These children are usually in a critical condition and appear usually to be sad, with wrinkled skin, a decrease in muscle tone, and dry mucous tissue. In the treatment of hypotrophy, it is important to first find a possible cause. The therapy is directed at correcting the underlying pathology and to find a solution to solve it. In stage 1 of hypotrophy, the undernutrition can usually be treated with increase in feeding and treatment of the pathology. In stage 2 and 3, children often have a low tolerance for food and in the first days of the treatment, parenteral nutrition should be used and the amount of supplied nutrition should slowly be increased. The treatment has to be individualized depending on the disease that caused the hypotrophy. Refeeding is usually started with vegetable broth and later on milk porridge, vegetable puree and in the last steps all kinds of food appropriate for the age group can be introduced and slowly increased in amounts. In all stages of hypotrophy, vitamin and enzyme preparations can be used in the treatment. In severe hypotrophy, also hormonal therapy is sometimes used. Also gymnastics and physiotherapy can help the child to build and learn how to use the muscles that were weakened when they start to build up again. In stage 1 hypotrophy, we usually try to give around 140 to 160 calories per kilo per day and around 3.5 gram of protein per kilo per day. In stage 2 hypotrophy, 160 to 180 calories per kilo per day are used and around 4 gram of protein per kilo per day. In stage 3 hypotrophy, around 200 calories per kilo per day and around 4.5 gram of protein per kilo per day. This chart can be used when a child tolerates the food well. In some cases it has to be started with a lower amount and then be gradually increased. That's it for this video, I hope it was helpful and if you like our channel, please subscribe. Thank you very much and hopefully see you again in the next video.